You're on board KCAA's Inland Talk Express. KCAA, Loma Linda, 1050 AM, the station that leaves no listener behind. Hello and welcome world to the E-Factor Show on KCAA Radio. And I have my special guest here, Harold Weber. And you've been here before, you know, because I... And so I want you to just tell us a little about yourself. Okay, well, uh, I love your platform, uh, what you do, and how you're trying to impact uh, culture, our world, Cornelius. It's just uh, phenomenal. But again, I'm glad to be back for a second time. I'm Harold K. Weber. I'm Dora's boy, also known as Pastor Weber. I'm a senior pastor of Living Way Christian Fellowship in Moreno Valley. I'm also a marriage and family therapist. I love what I do. I try to impact people in a positive way. And again, I appreciate, I must have did okay the first time. You're inviting me back a second. Well, time, well so. you did great. You did okay, great. Okay, and well, and you're your fan favorite. Just okay. to let you know. Okay. I mean, okay. Don't, don't take it too, but you're, no, your, no, no, you're actually good. really a fan favorite. And you're, you're one of my favorites too, because even though, like you say, I go to your church and you're my pastor. But, you know, it's like almost when we met, you know, some people you just meet and you just connect to. Just a kinship, to. yeah, just a right, kinship. Right, right, yeah, right, you know. Yeah, yeah. Because I always tell people that, you know, you remind me of my older brother okay. in a way. Well, I got to be the oldest. Well, because he was my older brother. <laughs> okay. No, my actual older brother. Okay, you're, you're Yeah, yeah, you remind me of him. Okay. And, and so, you know, I said, oh, okay, all right, good, you know, because, you know, we're funny and stuff. But at the same time, you're very serious, obviously, because you're a pastor, family, marriage therapist. And so what we're going to do, we're going to put all three of those things to work today. Let's do it. Let's do it, Cornelius. Okay. I'm excited to be here. And, and so this is our third and final Black History Show. The first one we started off regarding our identity. So is Black we History going to gonna be over after? This? No, but this will be my last show for this for month. So I'll be over. You'll still be black. But, but uh, No, I'm always going to be black You're and gonna proud. You're going to be black? Okay, I started off black and proud. <laughs> okay, and that's where I'll end. Unless, okay. uh, unless some, I get one of those okay. diseases and I start turning okay. white or something. Okay, like, oh. I didn't, I didn't, I'm not going there. I'm no, no, no. There. I'm just saying. Okay. But other than okay. that, that's the plan. Okay. okay. And so, you know, we went through all the different phases of our identity, like being the slave, then sure. the ex-slave. Sure. And then we were the color, the Negro, and the black. Okay. And now we're the African-American. Okay. Okay. And so we did that. So then last week, I had Carl Dameron on you. Of course, you know Carl. Oh, yeah, I know Carl. You Great. know Carl. Great communications and, expert. Carl yes, he is. is. A, a marketing uh, a guru. He's been, in the, he's been in the game for a long time, Carl right. Dameron. Nice. Not, and he has a powerful testimony of how... He was miraculously healed. I believe he had a stroke or some kind of challenging uh, health right. situation. And Carl has uh, uh, bounced back. Uh, yeah, he's doing well. He is. And as a matter of fact, on another show that we're going to be doing, because we are, like I said, this show ends today, mm -hmm. but we're going to pick back up in April oh, with great. so many different shows. So great. then we're going to have not only you back on, but Carl on, and we're going to have us on as a group. At the and same they, time. At the same oh, time. Oh, that'll be dynamic. At the he's, same he's time. He's a dynamic individual. Right, and so we'll talk about that later, what we'll be talking about. But has he brought up a lot of special points? Like the one thing he stressed and talked about was, of course, him growing up with a single mother. Oh, wow. Because his dad passed when he was six years old. And so we often talk about the single mother and all of this, but you know, a lot of times a single mother is looked at it in a negative way. Yeah, they're stigmatized. They're right. stigmatized, and and what we ought to do is support and encourage single mothers. No one is going to deny that a a healthy let me let right. me let me qualify a healthy uh, dual family situation with both a man and a woman in the relationship to guide and direct the children is is best. But again, there's so many single parents, both male and female, right, right. that have done a phenomenal job. And, and it's because they've created an environment. They've, they've created an environment, and there's an old adage that says it takes a village to raise a child. And a lot of single parents have, have that village around them, whether it be church or some kind of uh, social recreational center. A lot of people come through the boys and girls clubs. And so again, we don't want to stigmatize single mothers and because we don't know what, what caused their singleness. Right. Could have been a death, could have been just not a good, healthy relationship. But, uh, yeah, Carl has done well. He's done well. Hats off to his mom. Right, right. And what you said, touched on was critical. There's a lot of black single dads. Absolutely. Because, Absolutely. you know, like that's another stigma that black men aren't good dads. Right. Black men don't take care of their kids. Right. But there's a lot of things that we don't put on the news or we don't put at the exactly. forefront. Exactly. Because... 
I'm not going to say everybody now. See, every time I, we said we got to give disclosure, I'm not going to say right. everybody. Right. But a lot of people, no matter what the situation, if you're black, you're going to be stigmatized. Absolutely. And so Absolutely. E e even last year, there were over one, almost one and a half million single black dads. Wow. One and a half million wow. single black dads. Wow. wow. You know, when they do the census and all that stuff. And, and you don't hear that. You, you, you only don't. hear about the deadbeat fathers that are not financially engaged or involved. Uh, you, you hear the downside, but we've got to celebrate, and I love what you do. We've got to celebrate all the positives in our society, in our culture. Uh, and again, single dads, bravo to them that have done their very best to to create villages around their children as well. Right, right. And then what you said, too, like with the single black mother, we don't know why she's single. Right. Like, say, right. in Carl's case, he, she was single because her husband passed. Right. And that's why she was single. So right. we, we, when you don't know the story, I think we, we shouldn't look at them like we always say, well, you look at somebody, you know, right. you have four or five kids and you're single. First thing you're thinking, oh, why she has all these kids and she don't have a man right. to help take right. care right. of them. Right. Or she has all these kids and now she has to get government help or mm -hmm. something like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You don't know how she got to that exactly. point. Exactly. What did they say? Don't judge a person unless you've walked a mile in their shoes. Right. You know, and so we have to be careful with that because singleness is not a... A negative thing all the time either right because a person can be single but still being supported by that co-parent they still could be right. being supported that relationship just didn't work and even though a person is single it doesn't mean that 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 child should have a single effect in a sense in their life to where they don't have two people that love them and support them no matter what right but we sometimes even stigmatize the child Oh, absolutely. Like something with the child, and you put that on the child. Oh, absolutely. you only have one mother or father, exactly. whatever the absolutely. case is. So now this kid, he goes around with a complex sometime. And, yeah. you know, and we has grown people. A lot of times we do things or say things around our kids. Yeah. yeah. You know, you may not say it to the kid or to the woman, but you'll say it around your kids. You know, our kids are, oh, my mama said you this or right. that, you know. <laughs> and so now... You, you, you've hurt the woman and you've hurt the child, right. unintentional, right. but like you said, unless you've walked in that person's shoes, right. it's right. really hard for you to know or understand it. And there's all kind of single mothers. All kinds of, and, and I think also, Cornelius, to that, to that point, it's, you know, in a, in, a, in a single situation, I believe it's a divine design for a child to have both male and female influence, however you want to categorize that, that male or female influence. But I, I think it's also important that if you don't have either that mother or that, that, that father, that you have somebody that's like a mother and like a father. And, and I think we ought to celebrate those people as well because there's so many people who will say, hey, I may not have had my father, my bio dad in my life, but the man at the rec center, he was like a father right. to us. And sometimes you find some of these community heroes that are like a father, like coaches. A coach sometimes, if a kid has a single parent, a coach sometimes becomes a father figure, or if it's a female coach, a mother figure. Right. And so we don't want to discount uh, what our heroes do in our community. Like you, you go out and you speak to youth. Sometimes they say what's called at-risk youth. I know right. you even go into the juvenile justice right. system, and you're bringing a perspective of, of, of what's needed. And sometimes you may be looked at as a father figure or a big brother figure or uncle figure. And I think those things are really, really important. So if not a father in the home or not access to a father or a mother, to have somebody that can come along and be like a father, you know, or, right. man, when I lost my mother, she was like a mother to me. And mm -hmm. we just have to celebrate the resources that we have in our community. Right. And that's part of what we talked about last week, too, right. Carl and I, is that mentors, how exactly. important mentors oh, are. Oh, extremely important. How important mentors are. And I told him that in a sense, you know, that I feel like our generation, or they say we're middle age. Mm -hmm. So does that mean if I'm almost 63, will I end up being like almost 26 or something, if I'm midway. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. That's a curveball right, right there, right. see. But any, I, I'm not sure. Right. But so I think a lot of times when we talk about the single mother, and be it mother or father or what have you, that us as men, we need to step up 
and step in. Oh, absolutely. Because I, I say in a way that we're failing our young men, our youth, because if there's no father in the house, right? You know, the mother. They, I'm gonna give mothers a big old hand clap. Even single fathers, because mm -hmm. for a minute I was a single father. Right. And when you're trying to do all these things, raise the kids, especially a lot of time they have to work, or you have multiple mm -hmm. kids, mm -hmm. and you have to do all these things. And one thing the pandemic taught us was appreciate the teachers. Appreciate because We the always teachers. say stuff about the school, this, the, teacher, the teachers. This. But, what, but once the kids was at home and exactly. we were trying to do the teaching, we, we learned. Exactly. And, and so, you know, you take these young men and – where are they learning from right. how to be a man? Right. The mother does the best she can. And so what happens a lot of times is whatever man figure reaches out to them, mm -hmm. that's who they're drawn to. Right. And so if all you have as a man figure it is the negative type, right. that's where you're joined to because now they're showing you some sure. love. Sure, sure. Because they're needy. They, right, they, right. That's why uh, the data is real clear that, that some uh, again, single parent households that man or boy or girl or boy, mm -hmm. they're subject to connect to maybe negative groups. Right. Uh, people get involved in gangs and all types of negative uh, behavior and lifestyles because they want to feel, you know, accepted or needed or uh, again that mentor, right. if you would. And so it's 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 very important that uh, we have both. Uh, both uh, influences, male and female, but we live in a crazy world right now where it's sometimes even difficult to, to distinguish a male role from a female role and, and how then do you uh, influence a child? Is it necessary to identify different roles or even different genders? Because we have now, how do you deal with this? We have same-sex relationships right. that are raising children, maybe two men, are two women, and 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 how then do you determine if there's necessity for male input or female? I mean, it can get goofy, man. It can really, really get goofy. And I don't want to even touch that subject, Carnelius. No, we didn't come no. Talk about that. No, we didn't but come here but talk still, about that. no. The thing I, we have to realize is that we're talking about Black history. Okay. And so the most important part of Black history to me is Black future. I, I agree. Black I agree future. 100%. So it doesn't matter, black, African American, same sex, no sex, whatever. Right. Our our goal, like we said, we're here to influence, impact, and inspire, and create so, a better opportunity for those that are coming behind us. Right. As we remember those that came before us. Right. And so we've got to carry the spirit of our uh, our, our our parents, our grandparents, our great grandparents. That that work ethic. That 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 family is everything right and keeping the family together as much as you can because when we came through slavery one of the things that one of the more demoralizing things that happened to us as a people they sought to separate us i mean mm -hmm. you would have a mother get sold on an auction block a father get sold separated so family uh, i mean family is important period but especially to a community of african americans to where we were disenfranchised and we were separated right. uh, from family. And so we really have to instill that sense of family value, learning how to care for one another and take care, for one, take care of one another as best right, we can. Right. But, you know, it's when you say separated, I mean, a lot of times I've came across people today, this day, and they're saying, well, the reason why this happens is because they separate us. The reason why the fathers are this because they separate us. I say that may have been then, but even like we talk about with marriage, you can be in the house, but still distant. Still sure, absent, sure, sure, sure. Still absent. Sure, like, sure. You know, like a lot of times the one parent, be it the mother or the father, they're doing the majority of the work. They're cooking, they're cleaning, they're working. And so you're there in body, but not in mind and spirit. So you're still absent. And so when it comes to the marriage part, that's an issue too. I talk to a lot of people. Mm -hmm. See, because I go around and talk to people. I just be like, Hey, what's going on in your life? All right. You know, that's sometimes a good thing. that's some, a good thing. Yeah, some, but sometimes once they start telling you, you be saying, Man, I wish I wouldn't have asked. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. I wish I wouldn't have asked. Yeah, you, don't, you don't have that kind of time. Right, right. Because they got a lot going on. Right, right. But still, you learn by talking to people. I'm sure as a therapist, 
the first thing you need to do is establish some kind of relationship absolutely where people can feel comfortable talking to you absolutely we call it rapport rapport and, okay. and, and our, but you know so many people I mean if you go back you know 200 years where we were an enslaved people we did things for survival right we did things for survival it's even determined that we even maybe even over discipline our children mm. for a sake of survival because we didn't want them to be in a position to where they had to be disciplined by the slave owners or the right. oppressors and some of that's carried over into uh, lifestyles today now as a as a free people mm. we've got to we've got to really be free and we've got to free our mind from some of the change that bind us to the past, some of the negative things, but what's happened is it's no longer a sense of family survival. People are becoming more independent. So inside the home, nobody's really taught us how to raise children. We kind of do it based on what Mama Nim did and, right. and everything Mama Nim did. I mean, there was some trauma involved in that. And so we tend to pass on the trauma instead of sitting down and learning how to be emotionally available. Because right. a lot of times, you were talking about dads, a lot of times the knock on dads is, oh, yeah, they'll go to work, but I really can't talk to dad. Because dad's form of showing affection is, look, I go to work, I bust my butt for 12 hours a day, I bring the check home, there's food in that refrigerator, my job. I don't have time to be sensitive. Right. I don't have time to hear about your issues because I got to get up and hit that clock, punch that clock in in the morning. But we've got to learn uh, this new word called emotional intelligence. I've got to learn to listen to you and find the, 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 the spots that, that hurt or you're troubled getting through in both a, a, a young man and a young woman. Right. And sometimes as men, because we, don't, we're, we, we share our feelings differently than, 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 than females, sometimes we're not emotionally available and even can the only emotion that we can show sometimes is frustration or anger, or then we just shut down altogether. And that's a recipe for some challenges. Right. Like you say, we, we're taking this and that, and, and we go, well, when I grew up, this happened and that happened with my parents, so I don't want to do the same. But you know what we're going to do? We're going to pick this up on the other side of this commercial break. We'll be right back. openings for one hour talk shows if you want to host a radio show now is the time make kcaa your flagship station our rates are affordable and our services are second to none we broadcast to a population of five million people plus we stream and podcast on all major online audio and video systems if you've been thinking about broadcasting a weekly radio program on real radio plus the internet contact our ceo at 281-599-9800 281-599 9800. You can Skype your show from your home to our Redlands, California studio where our live producers and engineers are ready to work with you personally. A radio program on KCAA is the perfect work from home avocation in these stressful times. Just type KCAARadio.com into your browser to learn more about hosting a show on the best station in the nation or call our CEO for details 281-599-9800. Life is filled with unexpected challenges, and when grief strikes, Off the Chain Alliance is here for you. We provide wraparound services for grief and funeral poverty, offering condolences and assistance with end-of-life preparation. Visit us now at offthechainalliance.org to learn more about how we support those facing loss. Help us make a difference. Support our program by donating today. Together, we can bring comfort in times of sorrow. And now, the voices of KCAA with an exciting announcement. Want to hear NBC News or KCAA anywhere you go? Well, now there's an app for that. KCAA is celebrating 25 years and our silver anniversary with a brand new app. The new KCAA app is now available on your smart device, cell phone, in your car, or any place. Just search KCAA on Google Play or in the Apple Store. One touch and you can listen on your car radio, Bluetooth device, Android Auto, or Apple 
CarPlay. Catch the KCAA buzz in your earbuds or on the streets, celebrating 25 years of talk, news, and excellence with our new KCAA app. Just do it and download it. KCAA, celebrating 25 years. Hello and welcome back to the E-Factor Show. I'm Cornelius the Renaissance Man with my special guest, Harold K. Weber. Hey, that's me. That, yeah, that's before me. we went to break, we were talking about the difference that sometimes, you know, we don't want to do like our parents and this and that. But sometimes it has a negative effect because our thing is, well, I don't want to do to my kids what my parents did to me. And so instead of being a disciplinarian and what have you, now we want to be friends. Yeah, well, that's, that's kind of a mistake. Right. Uh, that's kind of a mistake. They have friends that you have to help them navigate and manage. You, you've got to be uh, the leader. You've right. got to be the... You've got to be that voice that guides them and disciplines them because you know how difficult uh, the world is, society is. But we still have to be careful because we have things that our parents didn't have to deal with. When right. I was growing up, when I was growing up, television went off at midnight. That's right. I mean, the there screen. was nothing else to listen to. Right. The little the music. <laughs> the national anthem would right. play. And little even radio stations had a cut would go off. off. Right. But now in the world of constant content, We've got social media where it's never turned off. They've got video games. You can go online and play video games with people you don't even know. Halfway around the world. Halfway around the world. And so we've got different dynamics to deal with, and we've got to learn how to protect our children from information overload or negative in information that will affect your ability to to guide them, and because now they're listening to somebody else, they're listening oh. to, man, they could be listening to Drake or some rapper. They could be listening to some sports icon because they have a lot of influence. Right. We didn't have that kind of access when we were growing up. So whatever the rules were in the house, that reigned, and we didn't have anything to compare it with because all the parents were the same. Right. All yeah. the fathers were the same. They all went to work, they all came home, and they all just wanted peace and quiet. That's right. And so it's it's a lot different now. Right, because even, like I said, they have all these influences, but a lot of times they have these shows they can go to, and I, I say they disguise the show. They mm -hmm. say it's a kid show or something for children, but if you ever sit down and listen to the things they say and do, the curse words, the images, and everything they're trying to pump into their right, mind, you're like, right. you know, I was even watching a cartoon that was on a TV one time, and I'm looking at it. I'm watching this cartoon. I'm like, oh, little kitty cartoon. And next thing you know, Johnny's mad because he has a crush on Mark and, you know, and all these things, and you're wondering why, and they're shooting and they're doing all this stuff. It, this is supposed to be for kids. It's a, it's a, it's a different world, and parenting is... Uh, again, it, it's got to be upgraded right. based on the world that we live in. But again, we don't want to throw the baby away with the bathwater. There's some things that, some foundational things that our parents encouraged us to do, especially if you had parents that were somewhat spiritually minded. <laughs> Maybe they attended a local church, which was a community, and they were to you know, pass on to you a belief of a of a higher power of God and and where you could uh, receive peace from in healthy environments. We, especially, especially with uh, African Americans, I mean, we got through what we came through because we were a spiritual a spiritual right. people. Uh, church was again a big part of our lives, and I know that somebody can come back and say, "Well, church was used to keep us in bondage, and you know we we were with a white Jesus." And and, and I, but again. If you were to take all that stuff away, right? I mean, God is God, and we're the ones that put faces on him, but he's for people. And I think we, we have to pass on certain types of, certain, certain things of our heritage. Right. And obviously our kids are going to make their own decision, but I want to give them an opportunity to at least make a decision based upon how we've lived in front of them based upon what we say we believe. And so you don't want to throw everything out. Right. But again, we're always upgrading our parenting skills because the teachers are upgrading their teaching skills. And we're finding that we really have to uh, connect to children because all the children that were in, in your house, everybody wasn't the same. You right. Know? You, everybody sometimes wasn't the you same. wonder, right? Like, yeah. how can 
all these kids come from the same parents, two parents, but they're all so different. All so different, and they all have different pulls and desires in their life. I mean, how can you say, well, what happened to... What happened to Earl? Man, Earl raising the same family. That was my family. brother, man. Leave Earl alone. Yeah, okay. <laughs> raising the same family, <laughs> no, but, yes. but chose a different path. He right. got connected to, you know, uh, a crime, a life of crime. Uh, and was that a failure on the part of the parents? No. No, not, not necessarily. Earl just had an appetite for a certain lifestyle that may not have been noticed early enough to begin to change that. I know when we were growing up, Man, they had a remedy for if you were finding yourself in a negative situation. Man, they'd send you to grandmama. They'd send you down south. Or they'd send you somewhere in a, in a strong system that had greater boundaries to where you didn't have as much uh, stimulation. There wasn't no gangs right. in Arkansas back then. And so all you got to deal is you're going to go out there and milk a cow or something like that. That'll put you in check. Yeah. And what you say is important because, you know, I grew up in a house, my mother and father, they were never smoked, never drank, never cursed. You know, we were in church. I mean, great, great parents, beyond great. But when I was young, it's, I just had this desire to smoke. Right, right. To be cool. Right. To, you know, do all this stuff. And I know it didn't come from them, so you right. can't blame the parents all the time. Like you said, it's just something in you as your, an individual. And your peers. And your peers. Right, and right. And my peers, you. right. And what society... Uh, isn't that crazy, man? You mentioned smoking. Do you realize that all along the uh, tobacco industry uh -huh. understood that smoking was hazardous for your health? Right. And they glamorized it. If you go back and look at some of the older movies, I mean, everybody smoked. I mean, it looks so cool. Everybody smoked. And it's killing them. As a matter of fact, the federal government had to come in and force the tobacco industry to put on the side of the cigarette packages, caution, cigarette smoking may be hazardous to your health. I think they've since changed that and says, cigarette smoking has been found to cause cancer. They right. had to be made to do it. So you know we live in a world that appeals to our lower man, our lower self. Right. So you thought smoking was cool. When I was growing up, I, meant, I couldn't even smoke, but I thought it was cool and I wanted to be so cool that I smoked even though I would get sick after smoking. Right. But and you, that's crazy. But you were cool for a few seconds. I was cool for a few seconds until I started throwing up. Right, right. And even what you said about our history for church goals and spiritual goals. I mean, now, especially today, there's so few young people in church. Yeah, there's been so a flight. Few, there's been a flight yeah. from church. And I think it's, I think it's by really by design. I mean, and you know, call me what you want to call me, but I just believe there are free radical forces, good and evil, in the world today. And I think that we have to understand that to pull people away from spiritual basis, that's, that's a setup. But the church has to understand how to respond to that and not be so stuck in a certain way, right, right. not to be so stuck in a certain way, not to be so legalistic, but be willing to open it up and then be inclusive with the young people. But from the standpoint, obviously I'm a pastor, so I, I have a, a, a different perception right. than others. I, I still think that there's a, a benefit in fidelity. I still think there's a benefit in children being chased. I still think there's a benefit in not being promiscuous. I still think there's a, a benefit as looking as your body as sacred and belonging to God and as spiritual and not out here finding value in, you know, your body or sex or whatever that right. can be. And I, I think there's, there's some, and I'm not an old fogey by any stretch of the imagination, but I think there's a level of morality that we have to be able to convey to our young people that's not staunched in uh, legalism or all the can't do's and you can't do this, but giving the reasons why it's important to consider a different lifestyle. Right. Even like you say, they talk about the Christianity was a way to keep us enslaved mm -hmm, and all mm -hmm, that stuff. Mm -hmm. But the question is... to a certain is, extent, it, 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 was. it was abused. Right. It was, I mean, abused. it was abused. Definitely abused. Still abused today. But it doesn't matter if you say, well... They present Jesus as a white man. He was black. Okay, mm -hmm. so if Jesus is black, his word is still the same. 
Yeah. yeah. His word is yeah. still the same. Yeah. No matter yeah. what, if it's black, you change the color, it's still the same. But what are you doing? And I think a lot of problem, part of the problem, too, is that now, like we say with social media and all these mm -hmm. things, mm -hmm. whatever happens, it's, it's out there. So now you have all these religious leaders who are supposed to be religious leaders. They're out here. They're doing worse than the other people. And so the youth, they look at them and say, wait a minute. I want to go to, you want me to go to this church where this man has millions of dollars, his flocks are buying planes, trains, and automobiles, but he's doing the same thing I'm doing, but he's undercover with it. You see, so what, see, soon you as see, some, you see Cornelius. Whoa, 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 but soon yeah, as something happened, Pastor, I know. It's, it's blurted over I know, there. And I, know, I, know. I think that but has here's, effect too. Here's the, here's the challenge with that. Right. It's, it's an overgeneralization. Because, uh -huh. again, what we tend to do is we, we tend to look at maybe the high-profile individual or we'll find, you know, I mean, we, we live in an evil world. People make decisions, and they're always not the decisions in their best interest or the best interest of other people. But what we don't do is we don't highlight those folks that are doing the work, those folks that are, as we talked about, single uh, parents. Right. We don't highlight the dad that even though he may not be with the mom, that he's making sure he's getting those kids. He's making sure that that he's there. He's available. We tend to highlight the negative. So I'm going to say for those men and women that I know that are involved in community work, especially from a spiritual perspective, men, there are more that are doing the right thing than are doing the wrong thing. But Good news doesn't doesn't travel like bad news, man. Right. Bad news, man. <laughs> bad news travels like that. The speed of light. I mean, I can be doing the good, give my body to be burned, blessing all the children, but let me make one mistake. That's going to overshadow all the good that I've done. And so we have to be careful because character is important, but at the same time, we, we, we just don't want to throw the baby out with the bathwater and say right. all pastors, all churches, all right. this well, that's what and all do. that. And we don't, we don't want to do that. That's okay. just my All right. We're going we're gonna to pick this up on the side of this commercial. This is the E Factor with Cornelius Bryant and Harold K. Weber. We'll be right back. has openings for one hour talk shows if you want to host a radio show now is the time make kcaa your flagship station our rates are affordable and our services are second to none we broadcast to a population of five million people plus we stream and podcast on all major online audio and video systems if you've been thinking about broadcasting a weekly radio program on real radio plus the internet contact our ceo at 281-599-9800 281-599 9800. You can Skype your show from your home to our Redlands, California studio where our live producers and engineers are ready to work with you personally. A radio program on KCAA is the perfect work from home avocation in these stressful times. Just type KCAARadio.com into your browser to learn more about hosting a show on the best station in the nation or call our CEO for details 281-599-9800. Life is filled with unexpected challenges. And when grief strikes, Off the Chain Alliance is here for you. We provide wraparound services for grief and funeral poverty, offering condolences and assistance with end-of-life preparation. Visit us now at offthechainalliance.org to learn more about how we support those facing loss. Help us make a difference. Support our program by donating today. Together, we can bring comfort in times of sorrow. And now, the voices of KCAA was an exciting announcement. Want to hear NBC News or KCAA anywhere you go? Well, now there's an app for that. KCAA is celebrating 25 years and our silver anniversary with a brand new app. The new KCAA app is now available on your smart device, cell phone, in your car, or any place. Just search KCAA on Google Play or in the Apple Store. One touch and you can listen on your car radio, Bluetooth device, Android Auto, or Apple CarPlay. Catch the KCAA buzz in your earbuds or on the streets, celebrating 25 years of talk, news, and excellence with our new KCAA app. Just do it and download it. KCAA, celebrating 25 years. All right, welcome back to the E Factor with the Renaissance Man Cornelius and my man Harold K. Weber. Hey. Be before we left off, we were talking about how bad news travels. And that's what that's the problem 
right now is because good news don't make money. Oh man, no. Bad news, bad news makes money. That's why I travel so quickly. You know, it, it travels, and and we're, you know, I, you would think you have enough of a life of your own that you're not, you don't have the time to be in that kind of gossipy cycle. But more and more people, because of maybe we're not doing what we need to do, right? We're we're drawn to to gossip, man. We're drawn to just information about other people that won't impact our life at all. As a matter of fact, uh, one of your, I'm going to say colleague, because they're in the same industry you're in, uh, Shannon Sharp. I know you know who that is. He's got Club Shay Shay, and he's on ESPN with Stephen A. Smith. I mean, he had uh, Cat Williams, which is a a comedian. Right. 50 million views, and Cat was only spewing bad news. Oh, really bad news. Negative information about other people. Right. And it blew up. But if he had been sitting there talking about how many schools he opened and how the, all the good things, it wouldn't have got as many views. So if we've got something good, we've got to be intentional about marketing it and taking it to the masses because, again, with all these blogs and vlogs and talk shows, right. most of it's gossipy, negative news with the exception of one young lady, and I think her name is Tabitha. I don't know her that well and and i know she has products she's kind of like the black martha stewart oh and she's got a platform that's 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 really positive but other than some of the cooking shows a lot of the blogs are and the podcast are basically gossip stations right and they're they're there and, and it's bad money. news it's, it's bad news it's 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 on the backs of people that are not at their best and i just i just choose not to I mean, I I just choose to look at the glass half full and to try to be positive because we got more than enough negative uh, in the world today with with the political season coming up. And 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 as you know, because this is a a field that you work in, the data on some of our uh, 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 African-American youth, uh, the data on how we're doing financially, how we're doing in all these different areas, we tend to fall behind. And the question is, is, is why, and I know the questions you always ask, is there something that we're doing as a people to contribute to it? Right. Or it, what can we do? What can we do to offset the divisiveness in our own community? And what can we do to encourage others to, to be more positive? Where do we get help from? How do, and I guess I'll put the question to you because you're out there probably as much as anybody, uh, speaking because that's what you do. What? How do we? What, what? What's the answer? What? What's the answer, Renaissance man? Well, let me ask you a question. If you grew up in a certain environment and you looked at it a certain way, from the time you were born, that stigma, mm-hmm. as we always say, we call it stigma, but it's something else that's on you. So we have these names for them. You know, even as blacks, we have names for other people. Oh, they're ghetto. Okay, okay. You know, they're they're okay, ghetto. Like okay. you talk about what we can do for each other. Right. They're ghetto. You know, and so all your life you grew up in this environment and, you know, you're taught that you're ghetto because you live here. Mm-hmm, you're mm-hmm, looked at mm-hmm, as ghetto. Mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. what does that do to your mentality? Does your mentality say, oh, I want to be more? Your mentality goes, well, I'm ghetto. And so everybody is around me like this. So you don't see hope to get out of it. So you just kind of fall to the bottom. You and, fall to the you, bottom. But you know what's interesting, though? <laughs> we talk about urban, urban, uh, uh, culture, uh, you want to use the term ghetto. My daughter has told me never to use that term because it's, it stigmatizes right. people. But you know what? Madison Avenue, when, when I say Madison Avenue, the people that make money off the backs of other people, they've taken uh, the music in our culture, they're taking hip-hop, and they're used all these things that we once would call ghetto as sign-ons and tags to a lot of the commercials. They're using it and glamorizing it and making money off of it, drawing the masses in. And I think that as a community, we've got to learn to turn things positive as well. Right. We've, we've got to learn how to clean up what needs to be cleaned up because we've got to think about the next generation. Because the thing that grieves my heart is when I see social media and I see some four-year-old kid reciting some vulgarity that he's heard in a rap lyric 
that he doesn't even understand what he's talking about. Right. And I'm going like, wow, what, what negative indoctrination is that? And we've always talked about, you know, the majority trying to indoctrinate us to strip our culture away from us. And now we are indoctrinating our own kids with essentially what, what's, what's poisonous for them and having them, you know, live in this, this world that's fantasy that sometimes becomes reality in some of our urban centers where we see so much poverty and, and degradation and crime because of this, this, call it what you want, this ghetto thing, which right. is absolutely nuts. And I don't want to stigmatize anybody with the word ghetto because it wasn't a word we created. It was a word that they created from the standpoint of redlining and they called a particular area the ghetto which means that wow that has less value and so we got we got to take it and turn it around man right and we, we take that word because they've taken words and make them mean what they want to mean and we can take that word and we can turn it around and we've got to find some wordsmiths out there that if we're going to use that word make make it a beautiful thing that has a harvard a degree attached to it right word word smith and People Smith and exactly. all the Smiths that yeah. uplift. What you mean because, by that matters. What do you mean right. when you say ghetto? What does that mean? Right. And uh, we've we've got we've got to change some things. And so I'm one that, you know, I'm trying to watch what I say, watch what I send out of my right. mouth because I don't. If it's negative, and it's going to impact our young people, I'd rather not use the word at all. Right. Exactly. Because you do, like you say about ghetto and the, and the where they make money, they take that and then once it became mainstream, they're making all the money. Oh, man. But the people who started it, they're making no, they're getting nothing out of it, you know. And suburban kids are bouncing to it. Right, right, and they're bouncing they, to it. Right, a lot of the stuff they do, you know, it's off somebody else's grief. They don't realize, it. like somebody tell me, oh, it's telling a story. Right. So you're telling us, this person's telling a grief, a story of grief, but these, like you said, they're bouncing to it and they're making money off of it. But we're, again, it's, again, it's a setup, and we don't tell stories. I remember growing up, and I don't know if you know this artist, but we had messengers, uh, a man by the name of, of Gil Scott Heron. And I don't know if you know Gil Scott no. Heron, but he would make message songs like uh, The Revolution Will Not Be Televised. And he oh, made I remember the song, that song. He yeah. made the song yeah. Angel Dust, which was an, yeah. a message oh, song. It right. says when there was that Angel Dust uh, Era. epidemic, yeah. he said, hey, man, you got to get off of this, man. Right. You got to get off of this. And he made message songs that, and, and I think the, the entire rap and hip hop culture, they came out of, it was a message at first. Right. When talking about how great we were and coming up. Right. But now, man, it's, uh, you know, we just need to, we need to get a hold of these young babies. But then the problem is it's all monetized and you make so much money off of it. Right. And at the end of the day, it's at a point where I don't care who I hurt as long as I make my yeah, money. Man, that, 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 or who gets hurt behind that. it. We got to change that. Right. You know, one of Martin Luther King's speeches, I think, matter of fact, it was a speech that he made. Be the day before he died. Yeah, I've been to the mountaintop speech. I've been to the mountaintop and I've seen. The promised land. The promised land. He said, I may not get there with you. And so there's no more. Yeah. You know, how many of us are willing to give it all? Yeah. And I guess the question that you have to ask. Give it all to help somebody Martin, else. Martin, Martin, again, Martin was a very spiritual man. Right. Remember, he was a black Baptist preacher. Right. Very spiritual. I believe even a prophet, modern day prophet. Right. And, and he talked about this promised land, and I think what we've got to do, if it echoes back to the books of S Exodus and, Josh and, and, and Joshua, the promised land was very vivid. What I mean by that, God told them what was in the promised land. Right. And we've got to paint a vision of what is the promise? Mm -hmm. what, what is it that we should look forward to? What is the dream? And we've got to paint this picture for our young people to let them see what what promise looks like, what and, and and even in the promised land, when they got there, they still had to work to to secure the things that God had made available for them. So we've just got to paint a better picture, and we've got to continue to to be those voices, right? Those voices in the wilderness, those voices uh, in our inner cities. Uh, we've got to be like a Marvin Gaye man. Man, what's going on? Marvin said, man. Mother, mother, what, what, what's going on? Too many of you crying. Can, can you tell me what's going on? And right. we've really got to take a, a chill pill, and we've got to go, okay, well, you know, 
There's too many of us dying. There's too many mothers crying. What's going on? Right. What do we need today? Right. So we have to be willing to risk it all, too. Absolutely. I mean, so we need to be able to risk, willing to risk it all, because if we don't, you're going to have generation after generation live in that same cycle to eventually there'll be no more. Yeah, yeah. And, and, uh, I mean, we have to look at it realistically. Yeah, and, and what does risk it all mean? Uh, it's, it's, it's really, we have to take the onus on ourselves. Uh, it's just to be the best that we can be. Right. And to not get caught up and always keep the, the children in mind. Children in mind. And, and, and you know, I'm, I'm musical, and I remember a song. It was by, I, I believe, George Benson wrote it first, and then I think Whitney Houston came back and, and, and sang it. It was called The Greatest of All. And she said, I believe that children are our future. Right. Teach them well exactly. and let them lead the way. And that's, we, we, we've got to do it. And I think what they're saying is that there was a generation that forgot the children. Right. That forgot to, we it, began to do so well, mm -hmm. and then we just thought that they would automatically do well because we were doing well. And maybe there was a generation that forgot the children, man. Right, right. And that's the thing. Teach them and let them do well. Teach and them and let them do well. matter of fact, way. like we were talking about with the church, you know, we have a responsibility. Like I said, with us older men, we have a responsibility. And, you know, the good thing about it is like on uh, March 16th, mm -hmm. we're on March 16th, we're having, what is it, a men's day? What are we having? Oh, man, we're having a fantastic uh we're calling it a men's fellowship, a men gathering, right, a right. gathering. We're calling it a gathering of champions. Yes. And we're going to come together. Uh, it's going to be held at our church March 16th at, at 10 o'clock. Uh, we're going to have a breakfast. We're going to have speakers. We're going to be talking about generational wealth. But not only in the sense of economic wealth, but spiritual, emotional, and mental wealth. Because you can have all the money in the world but be bankrupt morally, right. be bankrupt emotionally, be bankrupt in your thinking. And I truly believe our divine purpose is to prosper and be in good health, mind, soul, and body. And that way, the sins of the fathers won't be visited upon the sons. And what we found out is you can sometimes become what you've come out of, even if you don't want to. And you can repeat some even call it generational curses. Right. You can repeat some of the negative things that have been nurtured into you without you even understanding that you're operating out of that. So, yes, March 16th, man, thank you for, for, for saying that. Right. And the thing about this is that's good is we're not just going to have a bunch of old men there. Oh, no, 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 no. And all that. So what we're going to do, we want to try to have these young guys. Absolutely. Young guys. We want young guys to come because, see, if the young guys learn, like I say in my business, if I teach the father, the father can go teach the kids. Absolutely. And that's what it should be. You know, and that, that. So what, it's hard to unlearn something. Yeah, but true. what we need to do is get them to come and listen so we can talk to them. We're not, we're not going to criticize them, tell them what they're doing wrong. Because a lot of these guys are doing stuff right. But all they hear is about what they're doing wrong. Yeah. So yeah. we want them to come and join us. We're going to have a good time. We're going to have a great time. As a matter of fact, it's don't, going to be a fundraiser. Right. Don't forget, give them the address, too. because It's going to be a fundraiser. We're at 12125 Day Street in the city of Moreno Valley in the Canyon Springs Plaza. We're right across the parking lot from the Golden Corral. And that's March 16th. That's a Saturday. It's a fundraiser. So we're going to have a breakfast. But we're asking everyone to contribute to the fundraiser. $30 per person, and that's, man, come on, man, 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 come on, $30, please. Our women, they have an event, and I think they charge $70, and they sold, and, out. And they sold no out every room, no room. 300 people every year. Right, no room. Men, 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 we're calling you to come out, bring a friend, $30 per person. It's a fundraiser so that we can do scholarships and other things that we want to do to help fund our youth throughout the rest of the year. So, uh Come out March 16th, Saturday, 10 a.m. We have a fantastic time. Right. And if they say, well, you know, I have all these kids' responsibilities, I don't have the $30. Go find the $30. Yeah. No, we're not doing that. If you can't uh -huh. find $30, there's a problem right there, and we need to talk about that. You need to see it as an investment. Right. Because what I found, man, is people do what they want to do. That's right. When they want to do it. That's right. And they'll find $30 to get into the club. They'll use their last $30 to get into the club, man. Right. So investment. So investment 
equals value. Investments equal, uh, again, if it's a good investment, it equals return. Right. Something that you're going to benefit from, and again, that organization is going to benefit from. And so please come out. Please, 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 please. Everyone is welcome. Uh, again, it's not, quote, unquote, a religious event. No. Because it's or a black a event. Church, or a black event. But again, we want you to come out. $30 per person. Bring a friend. That's only $60. If you don't have a friend in your life that's worth you investing $30 into, then you ought to really uh, kind of question if you really have placed any value in that friend. Right. Do you have some friends that, you, that, you, that you'd invest 30 bucks for? I have a lot of friends I'd okay, invest $30 okay, okay. for. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. I, got, I got some. And, and some will invest it in other people, too. Exactly. So we want to so. create a chain. We want the house to be full. Yeah. Well, our time is almost up. What? Well, it is up. What? Not almost. But thank you again, Harold, for being here. Man, it's been a and, great time. And we'll be back in April. We'll be back in April. We're not going to be back till April? God, no, it's going to be a long break. Well, maybe before, but we'll definitely be back in April. And what we're going to do in April, we're going to start our, our programs. What we want to do is encourage people, and it's going to be a program that's geared for everybody. Okay. But our object is to bring in the men. Right. What I mean by bring in the men is that, hey, you know, we can say all we want to say and all this stuff, but unless we get together and reach out to them to teach them, They'll never learn. Now, why don't you ever tell people about you're available for speaking engagements and that you'll and tell them about Renaissance Man and how you have an etiquette program to teach uh, our young people uh, etiquette. And that's something that we've lost Et uh, a flavor for. Well, not only etiquette, but life skills. Exactly. Life skills. This is the Renaissance Man. You can reach the area code 951-238-4720 or email me at info at the Renaissance Man dot E-S. Amen. All right, we'll see you in April. Thanks, world.